Protein is found in both plants and animals. In Western culture, people fulfill most of their protein needs from animal products. Typically, as a country's economy improves, it adopts many Western habits, including increasing the amount of beef its population consumes. In the U.S., about two-thirds of dietary protein comes from meat, poultry, seafood, eggs, and dairy products. Egg protein is the reference protein. In addition to protein, what other nutrients are found in higher amounts in animal products? Plant sources of protein provide most, but not all, B vitamins and also supply iron, zinc, and calcium, but in less absorbable forms. Plant foods are generally excellent sources of fiber, phytochemicals, and unsaturated fats, nutrients that should be increased in our diets to promote health. Recommendations for a healthy diet suggest that our diets be based on whole grain products, vegetables, and fruits, and include smaller amounts of meats and dairy products. The graph shows the amount of animal protein and saturated fat in four different diets. Based on the data here, what is the relationship between the two? Why do you think a diet high in animal protein increases the risk of heart disease? Let's start building protein. Looking at this basic structure of an amino acid, what element is in proteins that is not in carbohydrates and lipids? What would make an amino acid essential? Foods of animal origin are sources of high quality protein or complete dietary protein. High quality protein provides more of the essential amino acids in the proportions needed by the body than the same amount of low quality protein would provide. Compared to animal proteins, plant proteins are usually more difficult to digest and are lower in one or more of the essential amino acids. Therefore, they are referred to as incomplete dietary proteins. Soy protein is the exception. As with carbohydrates and lipids, proteins contain carbohydrate as well as nitrogen. All amino acids have the same structure, a central carbon with a hydrogen, an amino acid, and an acid group. The final group is a side group that will vary, thus providing us with the 20 different amino acids. Amino acids that cannot be made by the adult human body in sufficient amounts are called essential amino acids, complete proteins, incomplete proteins, or non-essential amino acids. The correct answer is essential amino acids. Each kind of protein contains a different number, combination, and sequence of these amino acids. These differences give specific proteins their unique functions in living organisms and their unique characteristics in food. To form proteins, amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds, which join the acid group of one amino acid to the amino group of another amino acid.
Many amino acids bonded together make up a polypeptide. A protein is made up of one or more polypeptide chains that are folded into three-dimensional shapes. It is the properties of the side chain that lead to the 3D shape. Amino acids are joined linked with peptide bonds to form proteins. Condensation reactions connect amino acids to form dipeptides, tripeptides, and polypeptides or proteins. The sequencing and shape of amino acids determines the type of protein and its function. Polypeptides chains can twist and fold into a variety of shapes based on the charge and water-loving or water-repelling nature of the side group. When the shape of the amino acid is changed by heat, acid, or other conditions, the protein is denatured, with the protein's function altered. A number of specific carriers transport amino acids and some smaller peptides into the intestinal cells. Once inside the intestinal cells, amino acids may be used for energy or to synthesize other needed components. Those remaining travel to the liver. In the liver, the absorbed amino acids are deposited into the amino acid pool. The amino acid pool is all the amino acids in body tissues and fluids that are available for use by the body. Amino acids in the available pool come from the diet and are from the breakdown of body proteins. They are used to synthesize body proteins and non-protein molecules and to generate ATP or to synthesize glucose or fatty acids. The instructions for making proteins are contained in the nucleus of the cell in stretches of DNA called genes. When a protein is needed, the process of protein synthesis is turned on and the information contained in the gene is used to make the necessary protein. We talked earlier about essential and non-essential amino acids. The essential amino acids are those that cannot be made by the body in sufficient amounts. The non-essential amino acids are made by transamination, the process by which an amino group from one amino acid is transferred to a carbon compound to form a new amino acid. By transferring an amino group from one amino acid to its corresponding keto acid, cells can make a new amino acid and a new keto acid. This is called transamination. A limiting amino acid is the essential amino acid that is available in the lowest concentration relative to the body's needs. The carbon components can be used in one of three ways. Gluconeogenesis, which is the production of carbohydrates from non-carbohydrate sources. ATP production via the citric acid cycle. Or lipogenesis for storage. Extra amino acids are not stored in the muscle. During times of starvation, Protein may be used directly for energy. When amino acids are deaminated or lose the amine group, the nitrogen is converted by the liver into the waste product urea, which is excreted by the kidneys. Blank is the process of transferring an amino group from an amino acid to another molecule to form a second amino acid. Do you think it's deamination, denaturation, hydrogenation, or transamination?
The correct answer is transamination.